oh my god, I put on this shirt because I wanted to show my sexy back, but I'm sitting in the front so I can't see shit. Do you want to switch? <laughs> no, because this is my good side. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is Jake's idea. This video, this whole theme of like, uh, sit down talk with wine. I got two like really aesthetic ones. This one. Okay. Can you see like that is just my videos in a bottle? The like yeah. green text and all of that. Yeah. It's a Savion Blanc and it's natural wine. We got two natural wine because I feel like that's our favorite. And we had Drake prepared some peach and some cheese. So. <laughs> okay, not that YouTuber boy. <laughs> we promised that let's be real. So. <laughs> No, so. no, no YouTuber voice, okay? <laughs> okay. Just a voice. Mm. For the first video of this mm. whole series, I thought it would be a really good idea to have... You... Do you need help? <laughs> uh, oh, it's really, like, pretty. Oh, shit, cool. Our uh, favorite wine shop is called God Save the Bottle. It's so nice. And I stepped in this morning and I went in the door and I just saw these bottles standing in the front and I was like, they're new, right? Yeah. And she explained to me, yeah, like they're from New Zealand. And I told her that we really love New Zealand wine. So uh, I got them. Cheers. Cheers. It smells really good. It smells mm. almost like apple juice. Yeah. Apple cider. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, mm. that's a strong like natural wine, but it's really good. You don't like it? I do. Um. It's probably growing on you, that's how all natural wines. Mm. So uh, there was one asking us what was the first, so I thought we <laughs> I thought we could just have a little bit of questions about us first and then we can go on to like you guys' dilemmas and such because you have a lot, like you guys have a lot of dilemmas <laughs> going on. Was that YouTube voice? <laughs> no, I guarantee you'll get used to it, you'll be better. Yeah. No, you're just starting to completely open up to the word, you know, it's your first step, yeah, it be better. Yeah. So what was uh, your first impression of me, Jakey? When we first met? Yeah, I think. Mm. Oh, at the meeting room? Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna fuck you. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> no, you're not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's how you know she's the one. No, you, <laughs> <laughs> you looked very interesting. Mm. Mm -hmm. Cause you're, Cause you I had you expectations cause, about me. Yeah, cause I watched your video before we arranged the meeting mm -hmm. because it was a, um, it was for a collaboration with this beauty brand that uh, is my client, House of Doha. Mm -hmm. You guys can buy it at um, Creole.com. <laughs> Worldwide shipping available. <laughs> Super good. Okay. Vegan. Okay, oh, okay. you have to pay me now because <laughs> okay, okay. this is going on my channel. <laughs> okay, okay. Cause you looked and sounded so different. When I actually met you from your videos, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. It's just everything was so different, but yeah. not super different, but different. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how I actually, yeah, got like interested in you right away. Oh mm -hmm. shit, because that's the type of person that I'll be into, you know? But from YouTube videos, yeah. It You're wasn't. like, hell no. It wasn't, yeah, it's just, okay, business and business. Yeah. <laughs> well, my first impression of you mm. that, that day, we um so my one of my absolute best friends works with Jake Estelle. She's my Tim Jong Nim. Yeah. Mm, my favorite. Exactly. Mm. So um yeah, Jake is her boss and she was like, Oh I really wanna introduce you to my Tepio Nim, my, my my boss, the CEO. Mm. And I was like, Okay, okay and I was like expecting this dude in a suit, like super <laughs> like business formal like and I showed up and I walked in the door and Estelle and I was like asking Esther, so who, where is he? And then she was like pointing towards this dude in a hoodie and shorts and like tattoos on his knees and everything with long hair and a mullet. Mm. And I was like, Oh, that's when I had a mullet. Right? Yeah. Mm. I was like, okay. <laughs> I always said that I was interested in dudes who looked scary. Mm. But I never dated a scary looking dude before and I was like, <laughs> now is the time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know if we can find it because there's a lot of questions. I mm. looked at one earlier today that mm. said, um, how has the age gap defined us and does it have, does it like, do we have any issues because of the age gap? We have about eight, 
and, and a half yeah years of yeah mm -hmm. age gap and i'm i'm the oldest <laughs> 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 I don't really honestly feel it that much because mm. if you look at my my track record <laughs> mm. except for my previous ex mm. everyone has been very much older than me mm. and I think I've already just always just gravitated towards older men mm. oh man <laughs> <laughs> um, because it's just like for me I love the the sense of self and the maturity but age isn't always you know in men that doesn't necessarily mean that he's more mature but with you i felt it a lot like you were so like oh you always are so like rested in yourself and true to yourself which is a great thing which is what i really love about our age difference because you when you were my age you said you were not like that yeah i was a total garbage <laughs> <laughs> but is it because the boys in your age are most likely immature compared yeah. to the guys in my age I mean, or even obviously, older or obviously you can't really generalize all all people like that mm. but generally yes and also i just i as someone who went straight i didn't go to university i didn't do anything someone who went straight into the work field at 18 years old 17 actually no, 18. Yeah, you kind of jumped the process. I jumped the steps yeah. and I don't mm. want to date someone who's in school. Mm. And my previous relationship with was someone who was in school. And our biggest issue was we did not understand each other. We did not understand mm. what we were going through, couldn't communicate. And mm. I can learn a lot from you on the mm. business department, which is what I find inspiring and amazing. So generally speaking, in my head, there's definitely like a lot of pros. Mm. I can't really think of a con. Okay. Other than the fact that you're ready to have kids right now. <laughs> 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 You've also like dated young girls, haven't you? Or it's been very fluctuating with you. No, uh, it was like, like every age, yeah. Mm. Some were like in early twenties, or some were in my age, or oh, but I've never dated anybody older than me though. That's oh. some, yeah. Some okay, well, that's usually like that with men. No, but men have like a fucking such a, especially in Korea, they all have like Nuna fantasy, you know? <laughs> they, they really do, yeah. Nuna namu yeppa. Yeah, not, not that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you feel no, an age gap? not at all. Just, it, it just accept. Just, um, just at one moment, one situation. Okay. Whenever I talk about my past, and then you compare your age into that past. I'm like, that oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I when, was when I talk, yeah, when I was 20, blah, 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 ha, 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 you're like, oh shit, I was 20, 12. <laughs> like, what? Yeah, that, that kind of makes me feel weird. That but creeps like, you out a bit. Yeah. But you know, that's why I say it, to creep you out. I know, because you think it's funny, fuck. But anyways, mm. yeah, so no, yeah, no negative. Mm issues with the age gap yeah i'm glad because like the issues we have has nothing to do with our age gap I think. it's more like with our personalities mm -hmm. yeah there was another question that uh, i remember that was if um, we ever fight <laughs> okay okay if someone is out there sitting in a relationship where none of you ever fight or have a discussion or something mm. i personally mm think there's something wrong there's something wrong someone is holding back someone is scared of voicing their opinion mm. and that's not a good thing um so obviously we have fights and we have disagreement but really not a lot um I would and we say know how to solve it and we're moving forward yeah. so that's that's the very important part yeah in in the beginning like our first fights or whatever we we have very different reactions and this is kind of like in the um in the same like now i'm segueing to that question that i found which was um like how are we different and how like what is our zodiacs in that sense mm. and that just like it's so crazy because you're a pisces i'm a virgo mm. they're literally on the opposite spectrum of each other mm. but you have a virgo moon mm. so and i grew up with a pisces sister as well so i feel like we oh julie's pisces other. yeah wow. so yeah where where are we different <laughs> in your perspective <laughs> yeah <laughs> speak to me like how you speak to me, okay? <laughs> yeah, bro, where are we that from? <laughs> <laughs> we are very different, but that also comes to 
that also goes to all the other couples out there in the world because think about it we all grew up in completely different like uh, family culture mm -hmm. or like you know backgrounds like schools or like you know friends and mm -hmm. you know of course you guys are gonna be different we're gonna be different but the important part is like how we can manage it so that we make things for you know both of us is better you know mm -hmm. so that we move forward so we Mm -hmm. um get better for each other mm -hmm. but we've we'll been managing it well we have yeah we've been learning how to communicate with each other very well yeah yeah because yeah. especially with us two mm. we are very reactive in very different ways mm. um and so it's very important for us to be very clear mm. when we're explaining something and when we're like voicing our opinion about the other person's behavior or something mm. and in that way we can solve it i mean even before filming here we had a little, little yeah, flash on she has an issue with stress and i have an issue with anxiety yeah so when she gets stressed that gives me anxiety yeah because i feel and the need to like me having me me having an anxiety makes her stress worse you know yeah but then yeah we figured the way we we, we should yeah we should talk yeah mm. It's good. So like, yeah, talking is a key. Yeah. Yeah. And then one big thing for me in a relationship is like after we've had a disagreement or if we have a little heated moment or something. Mm. Oh, um, heated moment. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> mm. It's very important to me mm. to get some physical affection, mm. to like kiss or hug or something because for me that kind of shows everything is gonna be okay. We love each other and we'll work the hardest. For me, that was, that's what that means, and especially sometimes when we fight, like, sometimes, like, I feel like I can count the amount of times we fought mm. in, like, less than one hand. Mm. But, um, you have the need to, like, go away, like, exit the situation and cool down, while I have back, the yeah. need to, like, immediately agree with the other person that we still love each other. Like, I have the, I have the need to sit close to you and touch you, and preferably kiss you or hug you and then we can talk about the situation which is everything that you do not need in that situation like you don't want anything i think it's because you know all being in love is just a, a very um it's like a default thing it's just a stare obviously so yeah. like i don't need to uh, reassure that mm, i just yeah. need a moment that i just that's where we're very different in that sense yeah but we found a solution. What did we agree on? Like we haven't tried it out yet. You but you you still try to give me a moment that I can be just yeah. isolated from you. We talked about that for a minute. Yeah. We talked about that once where yeah. it's important that we just if we just quickly identify that there's a heated moment and we look each other in the eye and we say like we love each other or we give each other a hug and then I give you all the time you need because mm. then because like then I don't feel stressed because when when you are like if we have a heat moment and you go off your way and you like deal with it how you deal with it um then i get more and more sad and stressed and i start to cry and i start to like i'm laying in my bed and being like hey, he doesn't want to talk to me he doesn't love me anymore like that's kind of my emotions in it and that would be prevented if we just quickly like mm, mm, i love you go take your time and then you know yeah so if anybody wants to work things out with um someone's partner they need to talk a lot mm -hmm. and yeah. that's the only way to make things non-toxic i think mm -hmm. mm. there was another question that i saw which was oh. um is it okay to go to bed and sleep on an issue i mean if it's a really serious issues that they needed time more than a day then i don't know but at least they can talk about it oh fuck i hope that doesn't happen to you no like honey like <laughs> sorry i can't really give you an answer right now but mm. like let's talk tomorrow or i don't know that's a good thing i feel like if you but giving a given timeline is really important so that yeah. the partner knows that okay until then yeah yeah, yeah. i will come that's that's a very good point i feel yeah. like i could live with that if that ever happened to us <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's do some dilemmas because some of you guys have some situation that you wanted us to answer about. Mm. Oh, this is a very cute one. So mm. I'm not going to say you guys' names. I forgot to ask if it was okay or not. So in case it's not, I'm just not going to say it. 
Someone here is saying, I have been married for quite an quite a bit now and my hubby and I have become lazy about date nights and intimacy so I think we're starting to get bored and uninterested in our relationship but we still love each other so much do you have any tips on how we could spark up the romance and make our relationship fun again? We haven't been married yet <laughs> Now but we're like ahead of us and then what, what, what <laughs> advice is they need from us? But our... because we're still in the in the in the part of our relationship where where most of it is still new and exciting and maybe they just have to be reminded about <coughs> a couple of things that we do right now that they might have forgot that they used to do too but it's a really good um good topic though because we were kind of getting into that step were we about a while ago yeah that because you do you remember you kept wanting to go on a date with me because you were missing it like yeah. how we used to do yeah that we couldn't do because of the busy life of mine or whatever and also because we live we together, live together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that kind of makes it hard that's what I, I thought but then ever since you brought that up I've changed my mind that um so I guess like I kind of like I, I have tried to separate multiple different types of you from you yeah. that there's my girlfriend sisol there's my best friend sisol there's my family sisol there's my you know sister sisol i mean that because i'm okay like, that yeah. was bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you know so like you know sisol i see at home like in the evening mm. after work could be like best friend sisol or whatever but then there still should be girlfriend sisol to me and to yourself so with yeah. that, what can I do? Then thinking, then like, you know, try to make more time to actually ask you out again. Mm. Like how we usually did. Mm. And like your birthday's coming up, so like I've been preparing some like surprises or whatever. Which by the way, you're very bad at keeping it. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, I want you to know all that because it's gonna be good, but. Because you don't like surprises, but you don't get that like, I Because I surprises. can't wait, <laughs> like I can't wait. Like surprises is bullshit, like just say it. No. I want to show up and be like, ah, I have no idea, even though I do know, but mm. yeah. But I think like my tip to you guys would probably be to, I think the most important thing to notice is what do you guys different love languages mm. and then try to incorporate that into surprises. If your partner is someone who likes surprises, Jake does not like that, so it doesn't work for me. But if your partner likes surprises, which most people do, you should try to incorporate that and you should try to talk to him about doing that and doing the little things that makes the scar like the scar the spark keep going. Because mm. I feel like a lot of people think that as soon as you're married, you don't have to try, it will just keep being amazing amazing. And uh, No, you need to put yeah. even more effort. Yeah, you need mm. to keep the spark alive. And yeah. like, you know, for example, Jake has three times in the beginning of our relationship brought me flowers, but he hasn't done it in the past six months. And yeah, go I, I I've done it a couple of times. Yeah, before. that's more than six months ago. I brought flowers twice ever since we moved here. He's lying. No, seriously, I did. <laughs> the sunflowers, you remember? Okay, there was sunflowers. That's right in the right beginning of our relationship. <laughs> no, I'll, not I'll, our relationship, but living I'll do, here. I'll do more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, baby. Mm. Okay, so another dilemma. This is probably gonna relate to a lot of you guys who are either younger or before your sexual debut. So this girl says, Hi Cecil. So I've been talking to this guy for four months now. We both know that we have the same intentions and that we're going to be here for, for each other in the long run. We've held hands, hugged and kissed. And you know, it gets more intense every time. And I don't know how to tell him that I'm not ready for sex, but I know he would understand. Like, I don't know how to tell him that I'm not ready for that stuff yet. So how to tell someone that you're not ready for that? Me? <laughs> oh, that's you're not the right person to ask this. How, how, how would you tell people? Well, you're, you're not either. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. But I, I did my first mm. relationship ever mm. when I was in school. I think I was 14. Mm. 
or 13, 14 ish, that time. Mm. That's right when it starts and to feel some, real. Someone wanted to have sex with you when you're 13. Yeah, it, he wanted more than I wanted. Uh. So, um, I, <laughs> and I just told him mm. I didn't want to. And then this mother mm. started being super weird and acting like really weird and like, changing his personality and being more like cold and cynical in a sense he wasn't ever mean but he was just like not distant like passive aggressive yeah kind of a little bit mm. and that made me super uncomfortable so i was just like you know <laughs> i don't want to be a girlfriend <laughs> you can tell him whatever needs to be told and it doesn't matter what the outcome is because if he says okay i really respect that i'm fine with that let's just be comfortable both of us you gained a really trustful person but if he says mm, and start acting weird or like tries to push it on <clears throat> then you just you know avoided a toxic person so <laughs> oh, both outcomes are good yeah you're doing well right now am i doing well yeah you're slowly losing the youtuber voice yeah that's okay okay you're doing well i need to get done every single <laughs> time i'm filming i can hear that <laughs> yeah you're doing well thanks cheers yeah mm. <laughs> You either lose benefits. a guy or you gain yeah, a guy. Yeah, exactly. And but then, if you lose a guy, it's meant to lo you were meant to lose him, honey. Yeah, and then for her, it could be good too, because yeah. I mean, she doesn't need to have sex with someone that she's not ready yet with. Mm. Then that's good for her. But I just want to make something very clear right now, mm. and that is the fact that a lot of girls, especially girls, are raised to the idea that their first time is so special and beautiful and amazing and feels great. That is not the case. That mm. never happens. Like, no, the first time usually for most people doesn't feel great. It's painful as It might be different from men Mine because- Mine was very beautiful. Yeah, also it doesn't <laughs> physically hurt for you, but- yeah, Both of us, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, mine, I liked mine too, but mm. I was drunk. I met this person that same night at the club that I snuck into mm. and we didn't use a condom and mm. um, it, it, it it hurt like f hell mm. <laughs> and I ended up actually being in contact with that guy and being like like friends with benefits for mm. like two years time I mean and he's that's great I, I'm that's, so that's thankful to him yeah. but it wasn't that beautiful perfect time and I think mm. like people had to realize that you gotta be ready, but don't expect it to be this beautiful thing. And don't just hold back because you want this beautiful thing. It just can be there. beautiful too. Mine was Damn. with, in high school, with this girl. We were both for the first time for each other. Aww. It was really cute. Um, oh, it was, it was a little awkward then. Yeah, it was beautiful. We were, um, you know, like exploring and like learning um, together. It was our first time, like both of us. It was beautiful. It's very cute. She turned lesbian, by the way. It's <laughs> 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 okay. yeah. very hilarious. Deep in my soul, I really want a relationship with a deep connection and level of openness, but I have such a fear of intimacy, emotional and physical, that it Why? holds me back from opening up to anyone in the first place. I'm so afraid of the level of deep connection that it would take to have a really special relationship. Did either of you ever struggle with this? And if so, how did you overcome it? That's like a life of Jake, you know? <laughs> yeah. Never got into a really serious relationship, yeah. But did you have a fear of opening up? <clears throat> no, I had a fear of... Committing? Trusting them. Yeah. Trusting them was my biggest fear. Mm. Yeah. Because I have a trust issue. Maybe that goes in correlation with the whole like <coughs> fear of intimacy and opening up. Yeah. Because to have, in my opinion, to have really good intimacy. And I mean, there there is intimacy that is superficial, which is also a very great thing. Like if you're having a one night stand or something. Mm -hmm. And then there is what, what she's, what you are <laughs> explaining, which is intimacy in a, in a relationship. In a deep, connected, rooted relationship. Mm -hmm. And in a sense like that, it is necessary to open up. And I mean, I'm an oversharer. I've never had an issue with that. But I do think that the first step is to like detect where that came from. For, <coughs> for Jake's situation, he realized why he, he had these issues from going to therapy in Canada. 
mm. and talking with a professional about it. And I think mm. that's a very good tip. Like, <clears throat> I feel like anyone could benefit from going to therapy. I've never personally been in therapy, but I think it would be great. Because knowing yourself should be the first step yeah. before you open up to anybody. You need to open up to yourself first. Yeah. You need to know 100% of who you are mm. and how you think and what affects you, affects you. Um, then you will see how to open up to other people mm. and how to, um, you know, receive things from other people, you know, that's gotta be the first step. So like, I think like a lot of people are struggling with this kind of issues and getting into a relationship. Mm. But if all of us know who we are, like, uh, really accurately, like hundred percent first, then things could be better. Yeah. That's very wisely said. I'm from Denmark. Every one of you guys know that. But mm. what you don't know is that Denmark is the number one country, I feel like, in the world with the highest divorce, divorce rate. rate. Yeah. And I don't think that is a bad thing. Obviously, you never go into a relationship expecting or wanting to be divorced at some point. Mm. Never. But you have to make peace with yourself about the fact that it might happen one day. You don't know because no, you, never you know. both mm. grow. Mm. And some people grow like this, some people mm. grow like this. And that's okay. Like, mm. that's just how it is. It might be perfect for each other right now, but that might not be how it is in the future, and that's okay. And you are never at your peak time. You are never at a moment in your life where, like, now I have to find this in order to do this. The only thing, the mm. only rule against that is, as a woman, you do have a ticking clock when it comes to kids. You know, now I'm jumping into a whole conversation about kids. <clears throat> yeah, you're ready now. I'm not. Okay, <laughs> I mean, technically, my body and my psyche is ready. You know, there's so many things in life that I want to do without having the burden of having kids. Mm. So, I want to do that first. You oh. liked this one, didn't you? Yeah. Let me bring the red one. <laughs> Baby, talk about kids. I love kids. No, you don't. You I love my kids. I love my kids. You know. Uh, oh my god. I don't like most of kids, but I love my kids. Okay. Mm. Yeah. That is so funny. You literally just told me mm. yesterday yeah. that a little kid yeah. on the playground was waving to you. It was not a playground. It was an adult like exercising thing mm. and you were so annoyed that the kid was there interrupting your work <laughs> yeah we're fucked baby yeah but don't worry fuck this is fuck okay i need to turn off camera <laughs> you stay there no it smells good though <laughs> <laughs> We're back <laughs> mm -hmm. from a little wine incident. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, the the carpet is okay, dude. You're like spilling so much I right don't know now. What's wrong with me? Let okay. Me tissue. The thing is, mm -hmm. this one has a bit of bubbles in it. Yeah, I think it's because I might have shook shook it a bit while mm -hmm. like um walking with it. We ordered chijitapoki. Yeah. Mm, so ready for that shit. Mm, it feels like a Saturday and it's a Sunday right now. I'm gonna work tomorrow, fuck it. Mm. Mm. Good? Oh! It's very interesting. I've never tried red natural wine before. Mm -hmm. This is really good. Really? Yeah. Nice. You don't like it? <laughs> oh, I need Ooh. to get used to this. Okay. Oh, this is maybe a good one. Okay. How do you deal with jealousy if we even get jealous? Mm. You've had some issues with this before, haven't you? Because it's related to the trust issue. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Would you? Um, I, I I trust you, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, of course, like jealous, like a bit of jealousy is very healthy for keeping up the relationship. But how to deal with it? I mean, like I feel like jealousy is something that's rooted inside of you and not inside of your partner. If it's just a small amount or like a little to a medium amount, mm. if it's a high amount, obviously there is something going on with the other partner as well. But I feel like. It has a lot to do with your own confidence and a yeah, lot to course, do yeah. with your own, with your own relationship. I agree with that, yeah. Yeah. 
like how I deal with such emotions like jealousy or insecurities are I always deal with my self-confidence, yeah, obviously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like it only motivates me, you know? Like it's something like 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 similar to that comes yeah. to me. Then I go like in my head, I'll work harder, I work out harder, I do whatever to make no, myself no, no, better. No, no. So whatever who loses me, that's their problem. I'm like, you know, Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I was very disagreeing with you on that on one a couple of those points. What? In the beginning when you said I'll mm. work out harder, I'll work on myself harder. Mm. Don't do that. Don't do that to win the win the partner's um, time for you. Like, don't do that to win over your partner because if you feel like you have to do something for your partner, that's a major red flag that you guys are not meant for each other. Like, and that partner is not worth your time. That's not a good thing. Like, obviously, you all have to work mentally towards each other, but if anything ever comes in physically, I don't think that's a good sign. Oh no, I was talking about like general, overall, in yeah. my life, when something negative hits me, mm. that only motivates me. Yeah. That's how I deal with stuff like that. Mm. But with jealousy, um, mm, very good question, but I don't know. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how to deal with it. Um, by trusting you, that's how I deal with it. And talking to me. Yeah. Like, again, talking, like communication. Yeah. If you talk with your partner and clear things out, it's gonna be fine. Like, yeah, if anything threatens my feelings, then I mm-hmm. talk to you. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But also in general, I've seen these trends on TikTok where people like say what they <laughs> <laughs> Siri, <laughs> where people like say what they what they like think is cheating or not, like they point towards that or whatever yeah. in different scenarios. And I definitely like I know that it's an individual thing, but in my head, whoa, there's a lot of people who think that doing certain things is cheating. Mm. Like for example, texting with with someone else from the opposite gender. People think that's cheating, and if they do that's that for bullshit. fun. And like, I don't get it. Mm. Like, I think uh, in general, people have to relax a bit more and be a little bit more comfortable in themselves and in their relationship. Mm. Um, but still, you know, always stay, stay true to yourself and feel deep down what makes you uncomfortable or what doesn't make you uncomfortable. Mm. And you also need to remember or to determine is the thing that I'm feeling uncomfortable with right now really coming from me or if it co- or is it coming from like a societal point of standard? Mm. You know? So let's end up this whole talk with um, mm. I have so many people asking about like where is our relationship going? Mm. And if we have plans on getting married and having kids and like when? <laughs> so um, with marriage, okay, let's do this. Let's count down from mm. three. And then we say now, um, in the amount of years that we want to get married, or when we want to get married, like quickly, like poof, at the same time, and see if we're the same. (laughs) Okay. Three, two, one, a year and a half. (laughs) That's that's about the same. Yeah. That is. Oh my god, I was actually (laughs) expecting you to be before me. Mm -hmm. (sighs) I mean, obviously, we've talked about this, guys, before, but (laughs) not to this point. Specifically, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. (laughs) Okay, with kids, let's do the same point. Mm. Okay, with years? Mm. Okay. Three, two, one, go. A year and a half. (laughs) (laughs) You're like, you want to have kids before you want to get married. (laughs) Oh my god. Why? Why? now but like realistically you're re- you think you're gonna get me impregnated within the last year and a half <laughs> i want to mm-hmm. i like kids you know yeah you want to be a dad i know mm. um, i love kids for me this is obviously where our age difference comes in uh yeah my mom had me when she was 24 so I, I, guess in I have half- wanted a kid since i was 24 like i said before yeah yeah i always wanted a kid 
I want to have a kid for sure before I'm 30. And also, I mean, even when I, like back then when I was young, mm -hmm. I wanted to have a kid because even, you know, being a single dad is kind of dope. So. <laughs> I'm yeah. just kidding, but yeah. Yeah. It's not because I'm getting old. It's just something that I've wanted. Yeah. Since, you know, years yeah. ago. I'm sorry, baby, but you're not going to get it in a year and a half. Okay. You're so okay we're going to get a dog first. Yeah, we're going to get a dog. <laughs> yeah. The dog's fine. Yeah. yeah. Let's get a dog first, then you can learn how to take care of dog first. Dog's basically your child. It is. No, yeah. Except the fact except that they don't speak English or Korean. Neither of them. But, yeah. And they pee on your carpet. I'm gonna fucking... <laughs> <laughs> you just technically oh, yeah. peed on my carpet with red wine. Well, I said five years because in five years I'm gonna be 27, right? Mm. Around that. I'll be 36. Yeah, but you don't have a ticking clock or whatever, so it technically doesn't matter. <laughs> you think so? Yeah. Oh man, I'm getting tipsy. Yeah. Okay, well... Guys, this is... um. This was... The video <laughs> i'm trying to end this in a natural way so jake doesn't call me out but no, should be better for sure <laughs> yeah okay youtube is like 20 percent real you let's say it's not fake you mm -hmm. but real real you 100 percent you mm. there's more to me yeah yeah okay i guess more, i like, like that idea. funnier and even more lovable and more attractive and you know you you need to show that and also you're a very um, thoughtful friends to all your friends that mm. can be it to your subscribers too, you know? Aww. Yeah, you can do so much better. Even you can do like all this Instagram live with them, like YouTube live with them, something that you haven't done actively yeah. yet. Yeah. And like just truly be their friends, like seriously. Mm. That's what I have felt even before I met you or while I have been in a relationship with you that like you can show better because mm. you are a better person but you have limitized yourself probably i mean i, I know there should be some reasons because mm -hmm. you had to keep up some you know aesthetics that you like wanted to keep up or the blah 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 but now you can be more honest and like you know like a lot of your fans have been following you for years and then mm. oh geez yeah yeah like let them see more and let them feel more and you know yeah thank you for watching on the first episode of our new adventure <laughs> with being a uh, a more true and honest cecil mm. channel <laughs> mm. thank you guys for watching and mm. um keep keep watching please and keep scratching please it's really nice <laughs> <laughs> bye guys <laughs>